All right, folks, today we're going to talk about how to outline your informative speech. So just a reminder, your outline should be the general things that you should include or actually the specific things that you have to include verbally in your speech. Now, you're not going to put word for word what you're going to say on your uh, outline, especially in the body. But you need to put, uh, in general, what you're going to say. I'm going to give more specific with each item. So the first part is the introduction. Uh, your attention getter should be the first thing that comes out of your mouth. It should be you standing metaphorically in front of a microphone and snatching it up, getting your audience's attention. So it needs to be related to your topic in some way. So you could use a story, you could use a quote, statistics, uh, whatever it is, it just needs to be true and something that gains your audience's attention. If you don't gain your audience's attention, you might as well not say anything else. The next thing that you need to say is your listener relevance link. So this is telling your audience exactly how this topic that you're talking about relates to them specifically. So your audience, you know your audience, your audience is your peers in this classroom and your professor. So what are some ways that your topic is related to your audience? Okay, next is your speaker credibility statement. So now that you've told them, gotten their attention, told them why they should listen, you're going to tell them why they should listen to you specifically. So it could be something like, I've been researching this for the past week, or uh, I am related to this topic in this way. It could be whatever it is that makes you an expert on this specific topic. Next is your thesis statement. Your thesis statement must follow this structure. In this speech, I am going to inform you about and then you should have your nonprofit organization. And it should be no more, it should be one simple short sentence. After the word about, it should be one to three words, depending on the length of your nonprofit organization's name. The next is your preview of main points. Uh, this is going to sound very formulaic, but the biggest problem that people have is they combine that preview of main points with their thesis statement. I'm asking you to have them separate. So your thesis statement should be one sentence. Your preview main point of main points may be three, state, three sentences. So you're going to use the same language that you're going to use in your transition statements and in your main points and in your review of main, of main points. So your preview of main points should be first I'm going to talk about, second I will discuss, third I will examine. Now you can use different words besides discuss and examine and, and talk about, uh, but you need to reference your three main points. Then moving on to your transition statement. So your first transition statement should preview your first main point. So, and it should use the same language from your preview of main points. Your second transition statement should review the previous main point using the same language that you used in your uh, previous transition statement and previewing your second main point. So it may look something like, now that I've discussed this, I'm going to analyze this, whatever that ma second main point is. Your third transition statement will review both your first main point and your second main point using the same language again while previewing your third main point. This is going to seem really rep repetitive, but it increases the likelihood that your audience is going to retain what you're trying to explain to them. So now let's get into the body of what should be contained in these main points. So we've talked about how to build these in a variety of ways, but I'm just going to reiterate this once again. You're going to first develop your research. I want you to include in your outlines, I want you to include your sources. So here have your source and a brief explanation of that source or your support your example your research and your support and your examples should all prove your claims true 
your claims should come together to prove your main point true. Uh, your research and support is going to, and your explanation is going to be uh, multiple sentences. Your claim is going to be one longer, uh, but one uh, sentence, your main point should be one general sentence. But your main point sentence should be very short. That should be true for all of your main points. Now let's go ahead and move on to your conclusion. You're going to restate your thesis statement using the same language that you used in your transition statements and your preview of main points. You're just going to put it in past tense. So now that we've talked, we've talked about your main point one, we've discussed your main point three, and we've analyzed your, um, I'm sorry, you've discussed your main point two and you've analyzed your main point three whatever language that you use, just keep it consistent. Uh, you restate your thesis statement. Before that, I'm sorry, I took this out of order for just a moment. So before you review your main points, you restate your th thesis statement, put it in past tense. So today I've talked about this. I've informed you about uh, your nonprofit organization. We discussed, we've analyzed, we've talked about your three main points. And then your clincher, your final thing. This is where you are dropping your mic and walking away, or even throwing down your mic and walking away. You get your, you keep your audience thinking about your topic after you're done. It's really important that you don't make this persuasive, that you don't ask your audience to do anything because then you've moved from an informative speech to a persuasive speech. It, the best clinchers refer back to that attention getter. That's kind of like uh, tying the bow. It's uh, a nice stamp to end it. I'm using too many metaphors and I apologize for that. But a really ineffective clincher that I often see is thank you, that I often hear is something like, thank you for listening. I look forward to seeing your speeches too. Or thank you, just, let it, the last word that you say be incredibly memorable for all the good reasons, not for it diluting the whole purpose of your speech.